Well, hello, YouTube, and welcome to another episode of the Albino Rhino Beer Review. Today's review will feature a beer that I can never get again. It'll be my last beer that I can ever drink from this brewery, unless some of my friends have bottles of this brewery hidden around. Maybe the last beer from this brewery to be drank out of a bottle, period. Um, Today is January 5th, and I will be drinking this right here, a limited release, even more limited by the fact that it will never be made again, and is not made, and is not distributed, and not sold, because the brewery closed on December 31st. And this is the Beer Academy, or also known as the Six Pints Specialty Beer Company. They're Imperial Stout. So, the Beer Academy, or Six Pints Specialty Beer Company, is the craft, was, well, was the craft beer lineup from Molson. They make some great beers. I'm sad to see them go. I've said this on every one of the videos I've reviewed for them. Uh, because Greg picked me up four bottles, four different bottles. This is the last one. Uh, so, of course, I kept the Imperial Stout till the end because I love me some Imperial Stouts. Uh, what else can I say about this? Uh, I know that you may be able to get them at bar still. I don't know what he had kegged, but the brewmaster did say that until the six month. Uh, six month turn into a pumpkin date comes up, which is the beer's no more good, he will continue to sell kegs to his licensees if they want it. So there may, um, whether or not the licensees still want the beer is the next question, now that the brewery's gone, but, and they won't be able to keep getting it if the customers really do love it. But anyway, uh, what that means is there is a chance for the next six months, I don't know how many kegs he had left, but there is a chance to see Beer Academy beer is somewhere around Toronto still. Bottles were stopped. Bottles were done being sold on the 31st. I don't know if he ended up selling every bottle or not. Uh, if he didn't, he could probably sell some to me. The bottles were great prices too. These are 625 milliliter bottles. They were 625 for a bottle. That's a very very reasonable price. That's a cent, one cent per milliliter. I'm perfectly fine paying a cent a milliliter. Perfectly fine paying a cent a milliliter. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, what are we looking at here? It is 9.1% alcohol. What do we have over here? The SRM scale is 104. So this should be as black as my penis. That was a joke, because I'm albino. Um, th th but this should be uh, blacker than black. That should be as black as this suit. Um, just super, super dark. No light should penetrate it over 100 uh, on the SRM scale. IBUs is 50. Uh, it says carefully conditioned for six months. That's a nice conditioning time. And best served in this glass, and the glass they have lit up is uh, Brussels. So there's the Brussels. And it says best shared with friends on a cool evening while well, it's being shared with one albino at uh, probably 5 a.m. I'm guessing I just woke up I fell asleep at 8 p.m. because that's what the cool kids do and I rolled out of bed and uh, it was 5 a.m. and I'm like yeah well it was 4 a.m. I'm like okay let's take a beer out of the fridge let it warm up for an hour and let's play some Dragon Quest 8 until it's warm and then we'll go review it so here we are, uh, best enjoyed with friends on a cool evening, enjoy imperial stout from a glass worth contemplating, like the Brussels. So they're not really saying there's any real reason to do it other than to contemplate. Where the fuck did I end up putting my bottle opener? Hmm. We may have a dilemma. Seriously? I have no- oh wait, I do have one pocket, I do have one pocket. We have the Rogan left hand uh, stout glass, which is very uh, 
very much like the Sierra Nevada and Dogfish Head <laughs> IPA glass. Very much like it. <laughs> These glasses are actually made to uh, make a lot of head, but not as much of head as I just made. Um, I didn't have the glass turned enough when I was pouring, so the way it fell, it fell right to the bottom instead of hitting the side and going in, which really did make a lot of head. But it is a pretty beer. Um, the SRM, ooh, actually, uh, it's, again, it said 104 on the SRM. I'd say this is probably around a 90. It's a uh, mahogany brown. I'm getting some light through the bottoms. I would have expected full-on black at uh, 100 or above. But mahogany brown is still dark enough. There's just a little bit of light getting through. It's kind of murky. It's kind of uh, swamp watery. I'm okay with that. Nice big uh, mocha head. Nice brown head. Uh, look at that beer. That is a pretty beer. Actually, pretty much absolutely no snap, crackle, pop, which worries me about that head. That head's going nowhere. And again, at 9% alcohol, I'm amazed to have seen that much head show up. Even if the glass uh, really did help it, I'm amazed to see that much head show up on a 9% alcohol beer. And to have that much head stick around for this long on a 9% alcohol beer, that's a pretty spectacular smell. Foam. Oh, coffee and chocolate up the yin yang. Mm. Yeah. Coffee, chocolate, a bit of raisin, a touch of fig. Yeah, raisin, fig, chocolate, and uh, coffee. It smells amazing. Cheers, boys and squirrels. Let's try furnace is going to blow up. It's going to blow up. Let's try it. Cheers. Okay. Probably. Probably the, for lack of a better word, probably the worst beer I've had from the Beer Academy. Worst beer does not mean worst. It does mean weakest. Of all the offerings I've had from the Beer Academy, this is the one I probably like the least. And that's, uh, at least off the first two sips. And that's saying a lot because I love me some Imperial Stouts. Sticky lips, so it is nice and sweet, which I love in an Imperial Stout myself. I'm getting those sticky lips. I think the thing I don't like is I get spoiled with a lot of Imperial Stouts. There's so many Imperial Stouts out there that are 9, 10, 11, 12, 14% alcohol that you can't feel or taste the alcohol on, and my whole throat is warmed. However, that makes it a great winter warmer. I'm just saying that I think I'm a little spoiled with the way my Imperial Stouts turn out, with all the ones that I like to drink on a regular basis turn out. And, uh, not quite the way I like them. But a very good beer still, a very solid beer, just probably the weakest of the ones I've had by them. So, sticky lips, raisin, raisin and fig are very first, then you get a nice chocolate sensation, and we're talking deep dark chocolate, like dark chocolate, you're getting that bitterness, not that, not sweetness, and then a coffee roast, full on black coffee roast, like dark, dark coffee roast too, and then your throat gets warmed up. Um, not thin at all, it is the right consistency too. 
Uh, so, sip three, I actually think I'm enjoying this more. I think I was just thrown in the back by the first two sips, and I was, uh, my mind was killing me with the thought of, I can actually taste the alcohol, and I don't like that when I'm spoiled so much with higher ABV beers that I don't feel it or taste it. But it's actually working really well together. There's almost an oak tannin in it as well, and in all honesty, this is a beer that should be barrel-aged. Uh, there are beers that you drink and you're like, this would do amazing in a barrel, and this would do amazing in a barrel. This would have been done amazing in a bourbon barrel, it would have done amazing in a virgin oak barrel, would have done amazing in a rum barrel, cognac barrel, uh, wine barrels, pinot noir, uh, chardonnay even, just any type of barrel. This really would have had great characteristics to come out on. I actually would almost try this in a tequila barrel if I could get one just to see what that would do to it. Um, it's just lending itself very nicely to oak flavors and to liquor flavors. Uh, each different liquor would add a different thing to it, but the oak on its own, the vanilla, the slight tannins, the uh, slight bit of fruitiness that you can get from an oak barrel would be amazing in this. And then to add the different types of uh, booze barrels to change up things on this. This would have been a great beer to do that with. Have This is your... Now this is the main beer, and then have like six different barrels used for it, and show you what the different barrels do to this exact same beer. It would have been awesome to do, and Molson had the money to do it. So I'm actually saddened by the fact that they didn't go out and do that, because that would have made this place more appealing. Um, more appealing to beer nerds, because they want to know that stuff, and not a lot of craft breweries have the funds or ability to do it. And more appealing to people that are on Young Street to come off of Young Street onto Victoria. Anyway. Out of 10, I'm going to give it a 7.75. It's actually a more solid beer than I thought, but still one of the weaker of the offerings from them. So thank you very much, Greg, for picking it up. I really do enjoy it. I'll drink the rest of this while I finish up on my uh, Dragon Quest 8 before I turn it off and take the rest of my nap. Bye, guys.